Hey, welcome to this video where we are going to talk about compiler generated inits in Swift. So let's begin by taking a look at the following Swift struct. So you can see it's a struct called point with two fields x and y. Now, if you're familiar with Swift, you know that when you have a struct, Swift is going to automatically generate what's called a member-wise initializer, meaning it's an initializer that will take one argument for each field in the struct. So here, let's say that I want to construct a point. I can just use this generated initializer and provide it a value for x and a value for y. Now, this works perfectly well. However, there are times when we need to also provide our own initializer for our struct. So let's say that now in the struct, I want to have an init that takes no argument and is going to initialize both fields with a default value of zero. Well, now that I have this init, if I try to run my code, you will see that it no longer works because the initializer with two arguments no longer exists. Why? Because from the moment when we define our own initializer, the one generated by the compiler disappears, the compiler no longer generates it. However, there are times where we actually would like to still have this initializer generated for us. And a nice trick to do it is that we will select our custom initializer, remove it from the definition of the struct, and actually define it in an extension of the struct. So you see now I'm going to make an extension on the struct point. I'm going to define my initializer inside the extension. And now I can use both my custom initializer, but also the initializer generated by the compiler. And why is the compiler generating the initializer again? It's because inside the actual definition of point, there is no custom initializer. The initializer has been moved to an extension. And when the custom initializer is in an extension, then the compiler still generate the free member-wise initializer. Thank you.